Hi everybody. For this video today I'm going to be tying an iced case caddis. I believe this is one of Aaron Jasper's flies. It's a really effective fly, especially um, nor towards the middle of the season or early season whenever we have a lot of caddis in the water. I know in my area of, Pen of Pennsylvania and some of the rivers where I fish, if you look under rocks you always see case caddis and this is just a great fly that, that does a, an excellent job representing one. There's some other patterns out there. I believe Eric Straub has one that's a, it's a really uh, a great looking fly. But this is just a, an easy one to tie. Uh, it's a no-brainer and it really does catch fish, which is why I'm sharing it with you on this YouTube video. I also want to mention that there's a lot of synthetics that are used on this fly, which probably are used on a lot of the flies, especially on some of my YouTube videos. Um, I really am a huge proponent of using natural materials, but it just seems like some of these synthetic materials that are out there really just give you that extra shine just to get a little bit more attention when they're, when they're in the water, uh, which could be something that helps to trigger a trout whenever you're fishing some of these patterns. So I, I didn't want to um, say that I'm a complete advocate for synthetic materials. I absolutely love natural materials. It just so happens that there's a lot of flies that I'm tying for these YouTube videos that have some synthetics, including this ice case caddis. Uh, again, thanks for watching these videos. Uh, I'm going to list some of the materials used to tie this fly, and then I'll show you the steps on how to tie this ice case caddis. Thanks, everybody. Hi everybody. Before I start tying this Ice Case Caddis by Aaron Jasper, I want to point out just a few things. First of all, I'm using a straight shanked hook for this uh, because we're representing the case of the caddis. It's much more, it's a little straighter than the normal nymphs are. Um, with a lot of the flies that I tie, especially the nymphs, I'll use a curved uh, hook shank. But in this case, because we're looking at that caddis casing, I'm going to be going with a straighter shank and I'm going to be tying further back, closer to the bend of the hook. I also have a black matte tungsten bead at the front. One of the materials I'll be using today will be ultra wire. I'm going to be using the color black. In the past, uh, I believe this pattern calls for copper wire, but I do like this black color for this pattern. I think it looks really nice against the casing, um, and it doesn't really shine too much because you've got a lot of other stuff shining. Speaking of which, the main material used for the, for the body is going to be ice dub, peacock colored. A lot of great colors in there, and that's going to kind of give you that darker coloring that will look fine for the... Um, for the casing. And then finally at the head, um, showing that caddis coming out, I'm going to be using an Antron Sparkle Dubbing. The color that I'm using is Highlander Green. This is a nice color because it really will contrast against that Ice Dub Peacock. Sometimes when I don't want it to contrast as much and I just still like that green, the natural green color, I will use this at the head of this fly. Um, this is just a, a bright green caddis, I'm sorry, bright green caddis um, color. But if you look at it compared to that Highlander, the Highlander really just takes on that, that much more apple green, whereas this one on my right um, is just a little bit duller and it won't pop as much. I'm going to go for that kind of pop factor to almost kind of make the fish really just, a, almost. I don't want to say attracted to this, but it'll, that green will almost make it kind of appear as a hot spot because it is such a bright green contrasting with the, um, with the casing of this fly. The first material I'm going to tie on will be this um, black ultra wire. Whenever I tie it on, and let me zoom in here just so you can see everything going on. Okay, whenever I tie it on, I'm going to tie just leaving a little bit of room at the head. I'm going to try my best to simply tie it on just one side of the hook. And as I'm tying back, I'm going to kind of be pulling the wire towards me, which will just keep it on one side of, of this hook shank. The reason I want to do that is I want to make the hook just appear a little bit wider so that this casing appears wider to the fish. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm going to wrap back pretty far to start my dubbing. All right, once I have this, this black wire tied in, I'm going to add my ice dub, the peacock color. I'm going to dub it a lot tighter near the back of this fly simply because this casing, you want it to appear that it's you know, it's a little bit smaller, not as wide near the back, and then it gets wider as it moves up towards the head of the, this fly. So I will be adding a little bit more of this Ice Dub Peacock color. I'm really not too afraid to add a lot of this, simply because whenever I'm winding that, that ultra wire up, I'm going to really be winding it in really close wraps, and it will, it will be matting down the majority of this Ice Dub. I'm going to start building this ice dub up as I get a little, little bit closer to the, to the head. And that's about perfect right there. I take maybe a little bit of this out. Again, I don't want to crowd 
the eye yet. Now if you notice on this pattern, there's a lot of stragglies. I don't like these stragglies in, in this pattern, so after I'm finished tying everything, and once I clip off my thread, I'm going to go back with my scissors and cut all that stuff off. Okay, next I'm going to add this, or I'm going to rib this with this ultra wire, but I'm going to keep my ribbing really close together. Because I really want it to hold and kind of mat everything down. I'm going to get up near the front. I'm just going to add one turn of it. I don't even have to really worry about locking it in because that black ultra wire isn't going anywhere. Finally, I'm going to add my this Antron dubbing in the Highlander green color. Just kind of like that, that ice dub, I'm going to be kind of generous with this. I do want to make sure that it's visible from all angles so that the fish can really see this color popping against the um, popping against that that peacock colored casing. What I'm going to do to, to build this up, I'm going to wrap a couple wraps back, back towards um, the butt of the fly, and then over itself again. I'm going to push this dubbing towards itself to make sure that I have enough in there. So you can see I'm going to start to go back, and then finally bring it back forward, pull it back, make sure I, can, I have some room in there to tie this off, put a single half hitch, Finally finish this off with a whip finish. I'm going to get my thread out of there. And though the fly would appear to be finished, it's not. It's at this point that I'm going to go back through, kind of pull everything out just a little bit with my fingers, just to see what will come out right now. And then take my scissors, just make some cuts, and trim all that stuff away. I don't like those stragglies being in there on this fly. Some guys do. If you like that, if you want that, those extra shines in there, go right ahead, leave them there. Some people will, either, will also pick them out with a, a Velcro brush. That's something that I do on a lot of nymphs. For this one, I don't. It's just not what I believe is desirable for this fly. All right, once I have the majority of that stuff trimmed, and that would look like it right there, my fly is finished. So looking over everything, I have this, uh, this uh, peacock colored uh, dubbing, and that's the ice dub. For the casing, I have this green representing a green caddis just popping out of this casing. And then that the head of the caddis is represented by this matte black tungsten bead. Uh, this is a great pattern tied by Aaron Jasper. Uh, simple one to tie, uh, just a few steps in it, nothing really too crazy. Uh, I believe one of the keys is really to keep those, those wraps of your ultra wire close together to really show that that is the casing. And the one final uh, note that I'll make on this, you can vary the color of this top based on caddis that are found in your area. And then also, if you notice how much I have, you, you can see popping out on this side. There's quite a little bit over on that side, not as much showing on this side. And that is something that you can vary. You can show it with just a very slight amount, maybe one millimeter coming out. You can also vary it with almost half of it showing if you'd like to do that and see if it uh, tracks the fish differently. Um, in my opinion, this is pretty much uh, where I'd like it to be. Um, but again, that's just my opinion. And please don't be afraid to vary this fly. Um, you're more than welcome to upload pics or videos as well to my YouTube page. Kind of share um, any reply that you do have to this fly. Well, again, thanks for, um, for viewing this Ice Case Caddis by Aaron Jasper. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them directly on this YouTube page, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thanks, everybody.